anticipation of expectation. Amen. Anticipation of expectation. Now, these words are similar in, in, in their meaning. And so we need to understand that the double message or the message that the Lord wants to give us during this particular time is to emphasize really and truly we should be people anticipating and expecting God to move uh, in our lives. One definition of anticipation is realization in advance, foretaste. In other words, this is an assurance that it will come to pass, that it will happen. We don't have to just wait for Christmas to come. We know every day can be Christmas in the life of the believer because of who we serve. And we praise God because we can live with the anticipation of expectation. We're talking about keeping it real. And if we're going to keep it real, we have to be true to the God that we serve and believe by faith that he is a God that will not lie to us. He won't, he, you know, he, you know he, he won't play, he won't tease us, but he's a God that will deliver upon his word. Amen. Amen. Expectation can be defined as something expected. Each and every single day, we can live with excitement in the air. Getting up, not knowing what is going to be before us, but knowing that the glory of God will shine in our lives. Now, that does not exclude trouble and tears and pain, but God is so great and God is so loving and God is so faithful that even when the tears will come, even when bereavement comes into our lives, even when hard times and difficult times will come into our lives for the day, we have to know that even then, as believers, if our lives are hid in Christ, we can live with anticipation of expectation, knowing that God is going to bring us through whatever we're going through. Amen. We didn't go there to stay, but we can to go through and to glean when we go through. Amen. In Jesus' name. So we can expect victory no matter what comes our way. We can expect victory no matter how many tears we may shed. We can expect victory and joy and peace and blessing in the midst of whatever. Say whatever. Whatever I may encounter, whatever you may encounter, God is going to get the glory out of our lives if our lives are yielded to him. So anticipation and expectation means that we are expecting God to work. Thank you, Jesus, that you're no longer on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, you're no longer in the tomb. Thank you, God, that you're not dead. Because as long as God is alive, we can live with the anticipation of expectation that even though whatever he promised has not happened, today is a new day, and today can be the very day. This moment can be the very moment that we are just ushered into the presence of God in our lives. Hallelujah. See, the gambler goes to the casino with the anticipation of expectation of multiplying his wages, only to return home, greatly disappointed, because his anticipation was not rewarded with what he had hoped he would receive. There is an anticipation of expectation in the obtainer of a new job, only to find out sometimes that job just don't work out. Yeah. We fall in love with someone, and we know goodness well that love is not mutually exchanged to back to us. But we live with the anticipation of expectation that if I just do the right thing, yeah. say the right thing, buy the right thing, lose weight, gain weight, grow hair, cut hair, that he's gonna, he or she is going to fall in love. Well, we have to know that, no, those anticipations of expectations are can run void in our lives. But thanks be to God that when we can... When, when we have fellowship, when we're in prayer fellowship with the Lord, then we know that God is leading us in his direction. And whatever direction God leads us in, we're not going to be disappointed. We're not going to experience failure. We're not going to experience a void. Why? Because through prayer, we learn the heart of God. We learn the mind of God. We learn the direction of God. And when we go down the direction of God, oh my goodness, we're going to be ushered into his glory in our lives. Luke 12, 32 says, Fear not, little flock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For it is your Father's good pleasure, mm. good pleasure, mm -hmm. to give you the kingdom. Yeah. For it gives your Father great happiness to give you his kingdom. We have to know, just like it excites me, my children are grown now, but it excites me as a parent, as a mother, to give to my children. Why? Because I love them. Why? Because 
Yes, they do some 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 side things sometimes, but they still mine. I love them. And it blesses my heart to, to just give and give and give. And don't let them come and repent and say, Mom, I'm sorry, you know, I tripped that time or or I did the wrong thing and forgive me. Oh my goodness. It, it, it's, it's just multiplied into their lives. Well, we're serving God who loves us. One, one of the blessed experiences I've had recently is that I have a almost one-year-old grandson. And what he likes to do, him and Granny likes to nibble, amen. And so he'll come to Granny's chair, and I'm nibbling, and he'll look up at me, and, and I give him some, and we nibble together. And his eyes, the, 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 the intensity of his eyes that meets with my eyes, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, this is what God sees in our eyes. I see his trust. I see his love. I see his, I see that, I see him saying that everything is okay because Grandma is here. And, and that's what God wants us to live with the anticipation the passion of expectation that even if it's not happening right now, it shall come to pass. Yeah. Because it's the Father's the pleasure. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And don't be living for him. We know he reigns on the just and the unjust. Yes. And we know that all that we would do is just fill the rest. In other words, we don't earn Hallelujah. space with God. Yeah. But it yeah. certainly is good to know that we are people who are striving to live for the Lord. Yeah. And, the, and the Lord that we are serving will reward us. Amen. And that he will bless us with what we need. Yeah. John 10 and 10 says the thief comes. He has not changed his MO. He has not changed his mode of operation. He has not changed why he comes. But the thief, the devil, comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, yes. that you may have life, and have it more abundantly. No one, no power, no devil can oppose the will of God that God has the desire to bless our lives. And so therefore we can live with anticipation of, of expectation. We don't look at yesterday what has not happened. Look at the very moment. Look at the next moment. Look at tomorrow. Live with the joy of Jesus knowing that he is alive. And as long as he's alive, there's an opportunity for it to happen right now. Right. Right. Deuteronomy 23 and 5 from the New Living Translation tells us, But the Lord your God refused to listen to Balaam. He turned the intended curse into a blessing because the Lord your God loves you. There are going to be people, haters, you know, we like to say haters along the way. There are going to be people, people that will rise up against us, they think. There will be people who will try to hinder our walk, they think. There will be people who will try to stop us from being blessed, they think. But when they would rise up against us, the God who is in us, who is greater in us than he does in the world, will rise to our defense and will turn what they were intended for a person into a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we can be excited. You know, they, they are excited at the ballpark and they should be because the teams are playing and they paid a lot of money for the tickets so they should be excited. Well, we should be excited because of the God that we serve. Hallelujah. 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 And if it has not happened and if he said it's going to happen, it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians tells us that we know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves us and has chosen you to be his own people. See, what blows my mind about God is that not only is God able, but God is willing. Because, see, someone can be able to do anything that I need them to do. But the question is, are they willing? Yeah, yeah. But the God that we serve is not only able, but he's willing. He's more than willing. Hallelujah. And so we have to know that because of God's love for us, we can live with the anticipation of expectation. We know that based on our past experience, our present experience, that we can have the courage and the faith to know that tomorrow, tonight, he's going to be the same because he says, I'm the same yesterday, today and forever. He does not change. Amen. He does not move. Yes. Someone recently asked me if they could come back to a particular class that I was teaching and uh, because they had estranged themselves and removed themselves. I said, well, baby, we didn't move. You moved. Yes. And so, certainly, yes, you can. 
We are still in the same position. And that's what the Lord wants us to understand, that when things change in our lives, when, when, when we feel ourselves becoming a little cold and a little distance from God, it's not because he's moved from us, but we need to check our prayer life. We need to check our faith walk. We need to check where we are in the Lord to see where we have moved from the Lord because he doesn't move. He just likes to get closer and closer and closer. Why? Because he loves us. Hallelujah. So then in keeping it real, that's what we're talking about, keeping it real. Since we have had experience with God, Yes. Since we know that God has delivered us and God has blessed us and God has kept us, yes. why do we cry? Why are we worried? Why are we acting like we don't have a God who That's loves right. us? Amen. Amen. See, every time we doubt God, mm. we are saying, God, whatever you said, I don't believe it. Mm. You had to be lying. Mm. Because if, if, you, if, if you weren't lying, then I could believe you. But since I don't believe you have to be lying. But how many of you know that our God does not lie? Hallelujah. And with that being the case, we can live with the assurance. No matter how, how soon it's happening for them, no matter how it seems like it's not going to happen for us, we can live with the expectation, uh, anticipation of the expectation that God is going to give us that promotion on the job, that God is going to give us that home, that God is going to heal our body, that God is going to heal our mind, that God is going to give us that spouse, that God is going to pay that bill, whatever it may be. Yeah. Our God is able. Yeah. See, I, you know what? I'm looking. I, I, I don't have to be with me, but I'm looking for the Lord to manifest himself. I, you know, when you do ministry, yeah. you do ministry as unto the Lord. You don't, you know, you don't do it to be seen. You don't do it, whatever the case may be. When I do ministry, I, I'm, I'm thankful to the Lord because it goes out and I don't know where it ends up. Yeah. But I'm blessing the Lord because I know it's going to end up on good seed. Yeah. And I'm looking for the very work that I do to come back and bless me. From hands I don't even know. From people I don't yeah. even know. And God has used it over and over and over. That as we're faithful to him, yeah. we can live in anticipation and expectation yeah. that God is going to meet our need. And we don't have to know the source. God will send people into your lives who just want to bless you. Yeah. Amen. You will never you know that they won't see you again. But God, if you're faithful to God, if you trust Him, if you depend upon Him, if you rest in Him, then don't trip like God is not for you. He is more than the world for you. He's more than the whole world against you. He is more for you. God wants you to know that you can live each moment of your life stress-free. Amen. He wants us to experience the peace yes. that comes from fellowship and relationship in Him. He doesn't want us going and spatting out, okay, well, and I'm not at all against going to the psychiatrist or the, or the therapist. I'm not because I know that's one of the gifts that God has given the body. We need some help, amen. amen. In this day and time, we need help. Not because we're crazy, but to keep us from going crazy. Amen. So God has given those gifts to us. But we need to know that God wants us to look up to him and to trust him and to know that he's with us and he's for us. Isaiah 43 and 2 says, the Lord is saying, when you, when you, when you, not if you, but when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, and this is from the New Living Translation, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of opposition, and oppression. You will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Verse 440 of the same chapter 43 says, Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. Who we have to know, living in a, with anticipation of expectation, is looking for God's word to manifest in our lives. We have to know that God's word will not just lay their dormant on the page, but how many of you have, have already experienced it getting up and taking life in your, in, in your situation, and you've seen the very hand of God, you've seen the very breath of God through the word of God. God's word is not dead, but it's alive, and it comes to give us a life through him. 
Deep waters won't drown us and the fire won't burn us. <laughs> That's already been left on record. Ask the three Hebrew boys. Amen. <laughs> they didn't burn up. They went had to go through the fire, but they went through the fire and they saw the glory of God. See, he wants us to know that <laughs> go through the fire yeah. so you can see my glory. Yeah. We'll never see an element of glory that God wants us to see if we don't want ever, ever, ever want to go through anything. Yeah. of what I've gone yeah. through. You are a stronger man. You are a stronger woman. Yeah. Because it didn't break you, but it made you. Hallelujah. And see, I have a, I have a know that I know that I know I know about God that you can't or the devil can't convince me that he's dead. That's right. All right. That's right. Why? Because I've gone through and I've seen him in the midst of the fire. I've seen him with one waters who could have drowned me. Yes. But the grace of God kept us. Amen. Hallelujah. God helps us when we have to walk through what we have to walk through. And I love that when he says that you are precious in my sight. Oh, if we could just envision the love of God. If we could just envision the, 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 the care of God. If we can envision the faithfulness of God. Keep it real. We would not be people who are so self-centered. Worry about how I'm going to do this. How I'm going to do that. Oh my Lord. Oh But we'll be focused on doing what God has told us to do because we know that we don't have to worry about us. God has me. Yes. Now let me speak a word to you. But see, when we don't have that rest and that peace in God from anticipation of expectation of him performing his word, are y'all with me? Yes. Then, we don't, we, then we, don't, we don't have time to talk to others and encourage them because we're too much right. in trying to encourage ourselves. Yes. But God wants us to grow up in him. Yes. He wants us to come to a rest in him. Yeah. That not, you know what? And, 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 and it's funny because people, people, on, people who are watching you or people who are, you are ministering to, many times they don't believe that we have problems. But the devil is alive. We have problems. Right. Many times more problems That's right. than they ever prayer. Why? Because of the fact that if he can stop us, yeah. then he's impacting so many lives. That's right. But see, we have to believe what we read. That's right. We have to believe what God has said. We have to believe that there is power in the word of God. And God will keep us with the anticipation. So that means we have to live looking above our situation. Yeah. We have to live looking above our problems. I know it may be tough on the job, but we have to live and we have to live like we should live. That's right, that's right. We can't be going out late every day and talking about the devil's busy. No, the devil's not busy. You just being late every day. <laughs> but if the but if the devil is busy and you know you're doing all that you yes. have been called to do, yes. lift your eyes above that yes. and live in the arena where God abides. Because where God abides, there's peace. And don't let anything take your peace. Don't let anything take your assurance. Don't take anything, let anything take your anticipation of expectation for God to work on your behalf. Right. Many of us can testify that we're in positions that we didn't qualify for. We're doing some things, Pastor Vicki, that you know goodness well God would strike us dead if I started trying to say, well, you know the reason why I, because I, no, uh-uh. Nothing but the grace of God. Hallelujah. And that's why people of God, we can live with excitement, knowing that God is on our side, yeah. knowing that every day is Christmas. Every day should be a day of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanksgiving shouldn't just come in November for the believer, but Thanksgiving should be every day. If we were substitute thanking God, we wouldn't have any room or any space to complain and to whine and to, and to cry sad stories. Has changed the sad story for thank you, Jesus. Yeah. When the devil would come, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know you're going to work yeah. in my behalf. Yeah. And because we have the assurance that God is going to work with the anticipation of expectation in our lives, then we have to learn how to give God some praise in advance. You know, remember little ways, and I, you know, they, they may have some now, but remember little ways, you pay in advance before you took hold of the merchandise. Well, hasn't God been faithful?
faithful enough for us to praise him in advance? Hasn't God been faithful enough for us to trust him in advance? Hasn't God been faithful enough to us to give a Lord this is an advance praise? Because yeah. I know whatever you're going to do in my life yeah. is going to be good. Yeah. And you might not know specifically what God is going to do. But we know whatever it is is going to be good, good, good. Yeah. It's going to be good and good. And I know that. I know for the educators that, ah! <laughs> But God spoke to my heart and said, good is just where I begin. Right. I'm gooder than good. Now deal with God on the in English language. Amen. Right. But when we praise God, it helps us to honor and to worship God and to give maximum glory to him who deserves it. When we, when we worship God and we praise God in advance, it, you know, it, it's impossible for us to, 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 to if, if we're going to pray, we're not going to worry. And if we're going to worry, we're not going to pray. Amen. So see, we choose to pray. We choose to praise. Pray and to praise. Because there is such a wonderful and beautiful adornment that comes when we choose to believe our God, you, you walk around and, and it's like no, nothing is wrong but every, when everything else is going wrong in your life. But there's a beauty that God will clothe us with when we stand up and trust God, when we dare to believe Him. So dare to believe God for your ministry. Dare to believe God for your children. Dare to believe God for your family. Dare to believe God for your finances. Dare to believe God for your health. Dare to believe God for what you are asking God for. And then through prayer, see whether or not if that is what God has for you. And then when you're fully persuaded, hallelujah, that God has spoken to your heart, then you don't let no devil in hell take it away. You don't lose faith in your God who has made the promise that it shall come to pass. We have to know that God loves us. And just like he was yesterday and the day before that to bring us to this point, he's going to be the same God. It only gets better as we continue on in fellowship with God. So therefore, brothers and sisters, let's, let's live with the anticipation of expectation that God is going to perform his word because our God cannot lie. I praise God for you. I bless you. And I just challenge you to believe God. Stop crying. Stop having a pity party. Because right. the enemy will influence us to have pity parties, but he doesn't even come because we're so pitiful. <laughs> and God doesn't show because God doesn't do pitiful. Because he does, he's too powerful to do pitiful. So dare to believe your God. Dare to rest in your God. Dare to know that God loves you. Remember, it's the Father's good pleasure. Hallelujah. To bless your life. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.